Welcome back to Takeus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm Tim Takeus, and we're talking today about Medicare and Medicaid, talking about some of the myths that you may have heard about those programs. Our goal today is to help you give you enough information, or at least a way to get started to make good decisions for yourself. And I'm Barbara McGinnis. In this episode, we're going to be talking with Chris Coleman. He's an attorney with the Tennessee Justice Center, and he's going to help us a little bit with Medicaid. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Robin. What's, yeah. What's the difference, uh, again, between Medicaid, TenCare, and Choices, and how should our clients be thinking about that? Um, I think the first important distinction is the difference between Medicaid and Medicare. Medicare is a wholly run, wholly run by the federal government, and the state of Tennessee has nothing to do with it. It's for uh, people over 65 and some people with disabilities. Uh, Medicaid is a joint federal-state partnership that uh, provides um, health care for low-income people generally. Mm -hmm. um, and. Our state Medicaid program is called TenCare. So TenCare and Medicaid mean the same thing in Tennessee. Um, Choices is a program within TenCare that provides long-term supports and services, nursing facility services and home and community-based services for um, people who meet the uh, criteria for those services. Right, and then there's Choices 1, Choices 2, and Choices 3, or the former Choices 3, and you, you know, those of us who started out, heard Joshua talking about Choices 1 being something, and Choices 2 being something else as a part of the Medicaid program. Can you kind of elaborate on what those are? Sure. Um, choices 1 is uh, nursing facility. So someone who needs care in a nursing facility and meets that level of care um, can qualify for coverage of that. If they meet that level of care but can be safely kept in their home um, with home and community-based services, they can get that as long as the cost of keeping them safely at home is less than the cost of a nursing home. That's Choices Group 2. So mm -hmm. Group 1 is nurse, nursing facility. Group 2 is people who meet the level of care for a nursing facility but can be safely kept at home for less money. Choices three is now only open to uh, people who get supplemental security income, so very SSI, SSI mm -hmm. um, very low income people with disabilities. Uh, it provides home and community based services, but it's capped at $15,000 a year, which is not that much. much. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it does provide some help, uh, mm -hmm. home, home based services for uh, people who qualify. Right. So how does the Tennessee Justice Center help people get these benefits, or is that what you do? Um, we generally are not on the at the door of helping people get them, though we do uh -huh. some of that as well. What The way people usually find their way to us is if they have problems. Um, if they get denied and think they should have been eligible, either because they uh, Tim Care said they didn't meet the physical criteria, their, mm -hmm. their ability to um, care for their activities of daily living, or Tim Care says they don't have a, they make too much money or have too many resources. Um, if they think they're wrong, we will look at their case, and if uh, we agree with the person who's trying to get eligible for the program, we will help them file appeals and represent them in hearings mm -hmm. um, in order to prove their eligibility. Um, we also do work with uh, people who are already on the program uh, but are having trouble getting services they need. Uh, okay. And it's important to remember that choices, these home and community-based services, also come with full TIN care as health insurance. So it's not just these home-based services. Um, it's any choices service. So if, if they need an operation, they can get TIN care to pay for that operation. Yeah. Not, not just paying for the nursing home bed, but also paying for right. any other medical health care, medical care. Right, and, and pharmacy as well. Mm -hmm. So do you charge for this? Does the Tennessee Justice Center? We're a, no, we're a nonprofit, and we don't charge um, anything to uh, our clients. Um, we are a, an offshoot of legal aid. We were founded in 1996 um, after Congress put new restrictions mm -hmm. on what legal aid programs could do. So just to be clear, we don't we don't really want people when they're watching this program to say, "Oh, I need to qualify for choices. I need to call Chris Coleman, and he'll run he'll help me through the application process." That's not really what the Tennessee Justice Center does. If someone calls us and needs help with the application process, we'd be happy to help. Um, generally, the application is people can fill out the application and if they have problems they can call us. Okay. Should you let the nursing home do it? Is that something that I know a lot of people that some people obviously they they, they hire us, you know, and we help them through that process. Should people let the nursing home do that? Is that usually how people 
get on Medicaid or choices? Sure. I think most nursing homes do a fine job of it. And if you think about it, this is the way they're going to get paid. So they mm -hmm. have a vested interest in making sure they do every, they dot every I and cross every T and make sure these, that the people who are already in the nursing home are trying to get in there. Um, get eligible and enrolled in the program. Any yeah. tips that you can offer our viewers on who are going through that process about how to uh, that make it easier for them? I think the most important thing that we're seeing now is, uh, so there is a, a process called pre-admission evaluation um, that uh, looks at people's ability to, to perform activities of daily living. So mm -hmm. showering, eating, toileting, dressing, transferring, things like that. Um, but these have to be backed up and they send someone out to evaluate them, but they also have to be backed up by medical records. So making sure when someone applies, making sure that they have medical records documenting their um, physical needs, things that they might have trouble performing in their activities of daily living is the main thing that we're seeing right now uh, for people who are denied. I see. And then if they are denied, then what kind of process, what recourse do they have? Um, they can appeal and they should file an appeal as soon as possible because yeah. there are timelines on all these deadlines when they're not going to be able to right. appeal after that. But they can appeal and right. they can call us. Uh, yeah. And if they're already receiving benefits um, and are then told they're being terminated, they can appeal. And the important thing to remember there is to ask for a continuation of benefits because even if you're going to be terminated, if you think they made a mistake, you can keep getting those benefits until you have a hearing before a judge. Um, so that, so asking for continuation, appealing quickly and asking for continuation of benefits is important. Can you tell us a little bit in general about the work of the Tennessee Justice Center, how it's important to Tennesseans? Um, we do both legal representation of individual clients and we do class action lawsuits uh, um, generally against the state. Mm -hmm. um, to ensure that they are complying with federal Medicaid requirements. Um, most recently, for example, people were applying to TennCare and not getting responses for sometimes up to six months on their application, which is a violation of federal right. requirements. Um, so we represented an, a, a class of everyone who had been delayed mm -hmm. um, to ensure that the state was promptly adjudicating these applications and making sure people could find out what the results were. And we also do advocacy around uh, Medicaid expansion. Right now we have this large coverage gap of people who uh, make too little to qualify for the Obamacare subsidies, but because we haven't um, closed this coverage gap in Tennessee mm -hmm. um, and we didn't pass Governor Haslam's Insure Tennessee plan or right. his the, the healthy mm -hmm. three-star healthy plan, um, there's a large group of people, about 280,000 people who uh, don't have coverage right now and we have federal money that would cost the state nothing to provide them coverage, but the legislature has thus far refused to approve that. So we've been advocating for the state to adopt this, what mm. seems like a no-brainer um, right. of mm -hmm. federal money to cover 280,000 people. Because right. when we're talking about covering those individuals, that's important to those individuals and their families, but it also is the payment source then for some providers. Right. I mean, this is... Yeah, yeah. The, many of these people who are not covered, who are in this coverage gap, they're still going to need medical care. They're still going to show up in the emergency room. Right. Um, and that is going to be paid by hospitals, by everybody who is a pay, paying in the form of higher premiums. So right. when you go. Um, and it's also really important for our, especially our rural hospitals. Tennessee is second in the nation for rural hospital closures mm -hmm. because they rely so heavily on uh, mm -hmm. Medicaid payments, but yeah. without expansion, they're not covered. We're going to put your contact information. Hopefully everybody will, um, Tennessee, tnjustice.org. Right. Chris, we appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me. Oh, I always love talking with Chris and finding out what's going on at the Tennessee Justice Center. Um, we're going to wrap up today's episode and encourage you to look at our website for additional information and tune in next time when we continue to talk about uh, the issues of growing older and having disability. Thank you.